I've given you every single thing you need to grow your hair. So at this point, if you just don't do it, that's just on you. Beautiful painter, I love the way you painted the sky tonight. Beautiful savior, come have your way in me, you my one desire. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another day of Vlogmas. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys every single thing you need to grow long, healthy, natural hair, part two. So last year during Vlogmas, I made part one of this video explaining everything that you need to grow long, healthy, natural hair. And since then, some things have changed. I learned some new things. I've kind of been like, oh, this worked for me last year. This doesn't work now. And so now that I'm a little bit more educated, especially with me getting into manufacturing and formulating hair products, I feel like there are some things that we need to update and just give y'all the more tea. So, if you're trying to grow your hair in 2024 and want all the deets on exactly how to do that, then definitely keep watching. Make sure if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button, put your notifications on so you don't miss any other uploads. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram for daily content and check out my hair care line if you're interested in getting some products to help promote growth. Alright guys, let's get into it. So for those of you that are new to my channel and are thinking, how is she going to tell me how to grow long hair, she's wearing a wig. This is my natural hair. It's very long, very healthy, and it's tight for thick, coily hair, so black girls can grow hair. <laughs> I have been natural since 2017, so this will be going on my seventh year of being natural. So I know a little bit about hair growth. Just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> I actually do have my um, full natural hair journey on my channel, as well as, I think I made two parts of that video. So I last updated it last year, so we definitely need an update for this year's hair growth journey. But if you wanna check those out, definitely go ahead. They have lots of pictures, and you can really see my progress. Okay, so last year in part one, I actually made a PDF of everything that I had talked about. And this PDF has been linked in all my videos since I made that video. Um, so basically what I had decided to do was just kind of list everything I said in the video. And then as you watch the video, you would take notes. So I definitely recommend going and watching the first video that I made, the part one, so that you can kind of get caught up and have like a good starting point to go off. Because that video is very informative. But basically I'm just gonna go through this list super detailed. Again, update anything, give y'all any extra information, and just kind of share my thoughts now that I know a little bit more about the hair care industry, but also my hair, because it has changed a little bit. So yeah, let's get into it. So I remember I broke this video down last time into four sections, three sections. It was products, methods, and consistency. So first, let's talk about products. Same thing like we did in the last video. Again, I feel like there are products that are necessary for you to grow your hair. Now, I by no means think that you need to be a product junkie. You don't need to have 100 hair products, okay? I don't even have 100 hair products. The only reason I have as many hair products as I do is because I get sent PR. But actually purchasing hair products, I don't need a lot of products. Now, I will say, though, when it comes to finding the right products for your hair, unfortunately, you might have to be a little bit of a product junkie because it's going to have to all come down to trial and error. You have to try things in order to see what works. But hopefully what I'm about to tell you regarding these products can help you narrow down your options so you're not like just buying a bunch of products that aren't even gonna like touch the surface for what you need. Okay, so the first thing is a shampoo or a cleanser. I still think this is extremely important. Everybody needs a good cleanser, everybody needs a good uh, shampoo. Listen, if you're somebody that likes to um, co-wash, that's fine, but at some point you're gonna need to actually clean your scalp. So I recommend shampoos that have tea tree and peppermint oil in them. Those are my absolute favorite. They really help to stimulate um, your follicles to help promote blood circulation. I'm actually working on a shampoo right now for my line that's gonna have that same type of effect. So definitely stay tuned for that in 2024. But yeah, you need a product that's really gonna clean your scalp, but also a product that is not going to strip your hair. That's super important. So. Of course, anything with sulfates in it most likely is going to strip your scalp. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because you do add moisture back to your hair after you shampoo. If your focus is like, oh, I have super, super dry hair, then I would recommend going for a sulfate-free shampoo. 
Some of my favorites on the market right now are the Shea Moisture Jamaican Black Castor Oil Shampoo. I really like that one. I also just tried one from Twisted Up. Their shampoo is really, really good. Um, honestly, a lot of shampoos are like one and the same. Uh, I would say unless you have really, really, really bad scalp issues, you don't need to be too particular about the shampoo. Like using one versus the other is not going to make a huge difference in your hair growth. So really for shampoo, focus on your scalp issues, which you're specifically looking for in that. But yeah, shampoo is important. <clears throat> okay, so next is conditioners. So in the last video, I said that there are three different types of conditioners. You have a detailing conditioner, you have a leave-in conditioner, and then you have a deep conditioner or a hair mask. I'm going to revise that now, and I'm going to say that honestly, you only really need a deep conditioner and you only really need a leave-in conditioner. And the reason why I say that is because I recently, I'm gonna talk about this later, I recently have found a tool that helps to detangle my hair, like super easy, um, so I don't need a particular detangling conditioner anymore, but if you are struggling with detangling your hair, I would definitely recommend something like Ozzy Moist, Tresemme. I know those are have a bad rep because they have silicones or whatever, but silicones do help to um, give your hair slip, so it's gonna make your hair softer so you can detangle. And with detangling conditioners, you end up rinsing them out right after you use them, so it's not like it's gonna stay on your hair long enough to do damage. It's not like you're deep conditioning with them or anything like that. So if you knew to need detangling conditioner, I would recommend something like that. Usually those super cheap conditioners that you get in the big bottles are the best for detangling that's what i found also because those conditioners typically come in a lot larger bottles versus like the ones in like the natural hair care um companies are like eight to ten ounces that's like two wash days for me because i use a lot of conditioner i have a lot of hair so yeah okay so next is a deep conditioner or a hair mask i cannot stress this enough you need to be deep conditioning every single time you use shampoo not every single time you wash your hair, because sometimes people wash their hair, they co-wash, whatever. Um, and honestly, you might be able to get away with it if you wash your hair every single week, maybe do it every other week or something. But if you are genuinely like cleaning and clarifying your scalp, again, like I said earlier, that's going to strip your scalp and strip your hair. And it's going to be drier than normal because you just cleaned it. That's not a bad thing. Think about if you're washing your hands, right? You know how you wash your hands with the soap, rinse them off with water, and your hands are dry, you gotta put lotion on, it's the same thing. Like, when you clean something, it gets rid of everything. So all the good oils, all the bad oils, all the bad dirt, everything, it doesn't discriminate. So you need some sort of hair mask or deep conditioner to, to bring that moisture back into your hair during your wash day. So some of my favorite deep conditioners, y'all know the Shea Moisture, Manuka Honey, and Mafura Oil one. That's one of my favorites. I personally like super thick conditioners. There are a lot of really good conditioners on the market, especially ones that are from Natural Hair Care line. So you really can't go wrong with a hair mask. Tried a lot of deep conditioners. They're all basically the same. Um, some of them stood out, but like I mean, as long as you're getting in that moisture, it doesn't matter. And in fact, a natural rose does plan on coming out with a hair mask in 2024 so stay tuned for that we're getting a whole hair care line together period like i'm telling y'all you're gonna be able to do a whole wash day with a natural rose yeah so that's it for deep conditioners um so next leave-in conditioners this is super important as well because after you rinse out your deep conditioner at your wash day routine um you're gonna need to add <coughs> something in your hair to help hydrate your hair for the time that you go without washing your hair again so let's say you wash your hair every three weeks so you're gonna need something that's gonna help maintain moisture in your hair for those three weeks, and that's where a leave-in conditioner comes in. I'm actually gonna mix this one together with a hair butter or thick cream, that's the next product, because recently a natural rose, I, if you watched me before this, um, a natural rose used to have a hair butter that was like super thick, and so you needed to add a leave-in conditioner before using that product because it, it didn't contain any water. It was literally just like whipped shea butter with oils, so it wasn't going to moisturize your hair. So you needed water and then you needed something to lock it in. But the new hair butter that we have now, the hydrating hair butter, it's extremely hydrating. I worked for months with uh, formulators of color to create this formula so that it's going to hydrate your hair and also keep it moisturized. Y'all have seen in plenty of my videos where I've literally put this in my hair and that's it, put in some braids and then six weeks later taking it out and my hair still looks like a fr it looks like a fresh braid out, right? Yeah, so you definitely need some sort of leave-in conditioner or something like that to help lock that hydration in. Um, Cause I have thick hair, I'm gonna go on like the thicker cream side. If you do like, butters like whipped shea butter and stuff things that don't have water in them use a good hydrating leave-in conditioner and then use a butter on top of that to lock that in so whatever floats your boat i would just say with your leave-in conditioners make sure that one of the first three ingredients is water like a natural hair butter is so next would be oils this is kind of controversial but i mean what isn't controversial if you like oils great if you don't 
fine. I personally feel like oils are overhyped in the natural hair community. You do need them. Personally, I feel like they do have their benefits for hair growth, not in the way that people think. For example, you can't put oil on your hair and then literally have a crappy hair care routine and think your hair is gonna grow, no. Like you need more than just oil to grow your hair. But I do see the benefits of oil for like, if my scalp gets itchy, which it does sometimes, especially with me wearing protective styles, I oil my scalp with my own soothing strength and um, oil blend from my line. But this oil is specifically formulated for scalp issues. It's also a body oil, if you're interested in that. Cool. But it's formulated for scalp issues. So if you have super itchy, dry, flaky scalp, it's gonna provide instant relief and it's just a really great product. I don't oil my scalp every single day. <laughs> so if that makes sense. Also, I love adding oils to my deep conditioner. I feel like chef's kiss that just gives that extra oomph. It kind of thins out the deep conditioner so your product can last longer, but also it makes it so much easier to apply. So it's not, you're not missing sections because the product's so thick and it just adds a bunch of nutrients. Like my oil has rosemary and lavender, which are great for your actual hair strands, not just your scalp. So I like oils. If you want an oil, get an oil, but if you don't like oils and if you don't like butters, it's not necessary, but it has made things easier for me to grow my hair. So next is stylers. So depending on how you wear your hair, you might need a styling cream, you might need a styling gel, you might need a curling custard, whatever floats your boat. But if you like to wear your natural hair out, I'm not one of those people, I'm not ashamed of it, I love my hair, but I personally like wearing protective styles, that's what works best for me, my schedule, my preference, everything. But if you do like wearing your hair out, or even if you don't and you just wanna know how to style your hair, get a really good styling cream. If you do twist outs and braid outs, that's probably what I would go for. If you do wash and goes or you need a little bit more hold get you a styling custard or get a gel just whatever um, my favorite gel is the eco styler clear one the crystal one um, my favorite styling cream is uh what is it it's from the blueberry bliss line i don't even know if they're still out anymore i haven't seen them in stores in a while but the twist and shout cream that's one of my favorite twisting like cream styling cream and then as far as like custards i really like the do they have a custard i think it's called curling custard i really really like it Great consistency, gives me really good definition. Also, I forgot mousse, because I know mousse has been really big in the natural hair community this year, so if you do mousse only wash and goes or just like mousse, I would definitely recommend the Dew. Their defining mousse is really, really good. It was went viral earlier this year and for a good reason, so that's what I would recommend. Okay, and then the last product that you will need is an edge control. This is if you do your edges. If not, it's perfectly fine. Um, my favorite edge control actually is from Twisted Up. I actually just recently tried this edge control like a week ago and literally it held my hair for like three days. They have, um, it's like a gel wax. I also like one that I got off the TikTok shop. It's from Basque and Lather on TikTok. I'm gonna put it in my TikTok showcase if you wanna check it out. Yeah, so those are all the products you need. So again, shampoo or cleanser, deep conditioner or a hair mask, leave-in conditioner or some type of thick cream or my hair butter, detangling conditioner if you want, oil if you want and then styler so cream gel custard mousse whatever and then an edge control those are really all the products you need again you don't need to be a product junkie if you can have one of each of these products that works for your hair you're fine nothing wrong with trying new things but it's not necessary when i first went natural i thought that i had to try a bunch of different products you really don't once you find what works it's fine to stick with it okay okay so that's it for the products okay let's move on to our second part of this video which is the methods this is probably more important than products because i find a lot of naturals make the huge mistake of thinking oh i got this product that went viral for growing your hair or for leaving it moisturized or even my product right my products have gone viral several times on social media and people buy the product but they don't use it correctly they don't have the right methods of how to properly instill products into their routine so that they, they can actually get the benefits from them and then they get mad and they're like you you lied i'm like i didn't lie <laughs> i told you several times what it was so yeah methods are important how you care for your hair is just as important as what you use in it first thing you need to have is a good wash day routine if y'all don't know by now i got like 15,000 wash day routines on my page just close your eyes and pick one at this point to watch they're pretty much the same things don't really change that much with my wash day routine maybe little bits here and there so it doesn't really matter which one you watch but you need to have a good wash day routine wash days are super manipulative for your hair it's something that we have to do but you want to make sure you're doing it as efficiently as possible to minimize breakage and to get as much moisture as you can first thing you can do with the wash day routine this is up to you is pre-pooing um i used to pre-poo a lot when i first went natural i don't really anymore pre-pooing is for people that you're you find your hair to really be for lack of a better term unmanageable um whenever you wash your hair 
Pre-pooling can help to really soften your hair and make it easier to work with during your wash day. Probably because if it's unmanageable, probably because it's just very dry. So that can help to add moisture. So you can deep condition as a pre-poo, like before you wash your hair. I know people who do that. I've done an aloe vera pre-poo on my channel before. You can check that out. All these videos I'm talking about are going to be in my natural hair playlist, which is going to be linked in this video. So you're welcome to check that out if you want. But you can do a um, aloe vera pre-poo. You can um, do a hot oil treatment. I have a video on that as well. I made a hot oil treatment with my soothing and the oil blend it turned out beautifully my hair was super easy and super soft to work with so that's just if you want usually like whenever i straighten my hair or something i like i just did a silk press again you can go watch that it's on my page um so i just did a silk press so i'm probably gonna do like i did last year a bentonite clay mask as a pre-poo to help my curls really revert before i get into the shower so really it's just up to you um some people pre-poo some people don't honestly i haven't pre-pooed since i did that aloe vera pre-poo video which was like earlier this year like at least six months ago so it's just up to you what you want okay so next is detangling i'm gonna tell you right now if you watch my most recent wash day video or i think it's my most recent one i have discovered the unbrush i'm gonna tag that product in this video it should pop up as i'm saying this if i remember if not it's still gonna be tagged y'all need to get this brush i don't ever tell y'all to go get something i always be like if you want whatever it's okay it's, it's your journey no you need to get this brush this brush allowed me to detangle all of my hair in literally like 10 15 minutes that is legit half the time that it normally takes this brush don't look like it's anything special I bought it literally because it was going viral on TikTok and I was like, I'm going to buy it and tell y'all the real tea because people laugh for a check. This brush is not nothing. I use it and was utterly, thoroughly shocked. Utterly and thoroughly shocked. It even detangled my hair seamlessly dry. With that tool, that changes a lot of what I'm about to say about detangling because <laughs> it's just amazing, okay? With the unbrush, I don't actually need to use a certain conditioner. I most likely am not going to need a dedicated section of my wash day anymore to actually detangling. I most likely will just detangle tangle um, whenever I put my deep conditioner in which is something I never thought I would need to do before so with detangling again if you don't have this brush or you still struggle to detangle um, definitely consider detangling conditioner like I said before if you don't get the unbrush or whatever I would recommend these are my top detangling brush first then wide tooth comb then finger detangling honestly ever since I discovered detangling brushes it has made my life a lot easier I used to be so scared of them because people were like it's gonna break your hair off no like minimal if you're taking care of your hair minimal shed hair take your time start from the ends work your way all the way up to the roots go in sections you're gonna be just fine so so that brush just literally changed my wash day routine and that's just like recently within the last month so then cleansing so again before i would detangle my hair first then i would cleanse then i would deep condition now i'm most likely just gonna start with the shampoo and then go into deep conditioning and i'm gonna skip that whole detangling process and detangle my hair with my deep conditioner in so with cleansing what i used to do I probably might do still is um so as i was detangling my hair i would twist my hair in sections and then i would rinse the conditioner out with the twist still in and then shampoo my hair with the twist i still might do this because my hair is so thick that with my hair in twist it gives me better access to my scalp so i can really get in there and clean my scalp y'all know if you watch me i wait about four to six weeks to wash my hair so when it's time to wash my hair my scalp really needs to be clean so i really take my time with this so you want to make sure that you are doing that i personally like using a scalp massaging brush to really get on my scalp so I just use my hands to apply the shampoo to my hair or my scalp and then I use the brush to actually really get in there make sure you get around your ears your neck for me the crown of my head gets the most flakes and dryness and stuff so just really make sure you're cleansing after I cleanse um, I rinse out all that shampoo and then deep conditioning so with deep conditioning again I told y'all some of my favorites earlier so one of the things I like about deep conditioning is when you add heat it's like chef's kiss so there are many different ways you can add heat you can sit under the dryer i don't like to do that i don't do that you can if you want i have i think i posted on my instagram one time like a little diy like make your own uh blow dryer for those who don't have it you like use a pair of leggings and tie one end tight and then the other leg you stick a um, blow dryer in it and it'll be a dryer if you want you can get a deep conditioning cap i have one that is um in my amazon storefront if you would like to check that out and then also you can do what i normally do is a walmart bag okay put a walmart bag on my head put a scarf on my head put a bonnet on my head and leave that on i like deep conditioning for at least 90 minutes especially because I don't sit under a dryer. Um, if I use my deep conditioning cap, I can do about 45 minutes. But typically, I deep condition overnight. I personally have not had any issue with that. I've been doing it for years. I have a lot of hair, and also I run a business, 
and also I have like seven social media platforms. So I have a lot of work <laughs> and my schedule is very busy. Like I'm pretty sure most of y'all schedules is too. Like we be doing what we need to do. And so I might not have time to dedicate a whole day to doing my hair, especially if I'm going to be doing a style like braids or twist or something that's going to take a long time. So sometimes I just have enough time to get through the wash day routine all the way up to the deep conditioner. And it's like, I got to go to bed and get up in the morning. So I'll just put my hair in a bun and then I'll go about my day the next day. And then like later on, rinse it out and finish my hair. So I pray some deep condition overnight. I haven't had an issue. Okay, so next let's move on to moisturizing. Um, so this is probably the most repeated thing I've ever said on my channel since having a YouTube. Well, I've had a YouTube for three years and that is how to properly moisturize your hair. <clears throat> a lot of people, I'm just gonna tell you right now, if your hair is not growing, most likely it's because your hair is not moisturized. It has nothing to do with your scalp. A hair growth oil is not needed. You're being played, sis. It, a lot of us, our issue is that we're so focused on getting our hair to grow from our scalp, and it does, but then once it grows, you don't take care of it, and so it's dry, and it breaks. Think about a wet versus a dry pasta noodle, right? Like one's cooked, one's not. The uncooked noodle just snaps in half because it's dry, but when you actually cook the pasta noodle, add water, add moisture to it, it has more elasticity, it's harder, you can't really just snap it in half, it kind of has to like pull it. Same thing with our hair. So if your hair is moisturized, it's not going to break off and you're going to be able to retain the length that you are growing versus if you're like, my hair is always stayed the same length, it's not because it's not growing, it's just breaking at the same rate it's growing. So you grow two inches out of your scalp because you're so focused on using your scalp massages and your uh, hair growth oils, but then you don't take care of the hair once it grows, so it's gonna break two inches every single month. So it's just staying the same length that way. Just think about that. Thank you, helicopter. I love the fact that you wanna fly by when I'm filming, awesome. But, so as far as moisturizing, there are, I kinda talked about this earlier, I touched on it. Um, I would just say as long as you have a super hydrating product, you're straight. Again, my hair butter, I literally put it in my hair, put it in a protective style. Four weeks later, take out my protective style. My hair is still highly moisturized. I'm gonna show y'all this clip again if I didn't play it already. And if I did, I'm gonna show y'all again. In this clip, my hair is six weeks old. I had in some passion twist. I took out the passion twist. All I had in my hair was the hair butter and then some like braiding gel to like for parting and stuff like that. And my hair looks like a fresh twist out. Keeping hydrated hair is the key to growth. So like I said earlier, you can use my hair butter um, from a natural row. If you want like a super thick cream or a great way to do it is a leave-in conditioner and then some whipped shea butter. That's also a great option or whipped mango butter, whatever you want. Just make sure if you're using butters, if they don't have any water in them, you need to add a leave-in conditioner on first because otherwise it's not going to moisturize your hair. It's going to coat your hair, but it's not going to moisturize it. Like I said so many times, water and oil don't mix. So if you apply oil and then try to apply water on your hair, but then if you apply water first and then the oil, the oil provides a layer or the butter or whatever provides a layer so that that water can't easily escape your hair. That's another thing. If you feel like your hair, you moisturize your hair and then like two days later it's still dry so you're constantly having to moisturize your hair, that's your issue. You're either not using a thick enough product that can lock moisture into your hair or you're not using some sort of butter to seal it in. So the good thing about my hair butter is it does both. It's going to hydrate your hair and also keep the moisture in. So y'all saw me all the time earlier this year. I had to use a leave-in conditioner and then use my hair butter. But then the new kind that I formulated with my um, manufacturer that is a person of color, it does both. So I haven't used a leave-in conditioner in months. I would say since like August. I haven't used a leave-in conditioner, just my hair butter. So yeah. Okay, next method is trims. Let's get into trims. Trims, you need them, but how often do you really need them? Don't be trimming your hair if your hair is not breaking. Don't be trimming your hair if you don't have split ends. Honestly, it's gonna take some time to figure out how often you should trim. That's why I recommend observing your hair. So for me, about every four to six months, I need to trim because I never wear my hair out. So my ends are never really exposed to get dry, to get breakage, to get split ends. Um, if you wear your hair out more, you might need to trim more. But I honestly would say if you are taking care of your hair, you most likely aren't gonna need to trim your hair every six weeks. I don't know where that comes from. I think that came from our relaxer days, which made sense during that time. But if you're taking care of your hair and it's healthy, you don't need to be trimming every six weeks. You're just cutting off hair for no reason and then you're wondering why it's not growing. So I would watch your hair to see when it needs to be trimmed. Signs of when you need a trim, I misspelled this on this PDF, sorry. I said trime. <laughs> uh, so the feel, so if your ends feel rougher or very weird, that's a sign you need to trim. Single strand knots, um, that sometimes is, but not necessarily, because I know right now, I just trimmed my hair like a week ago. If I did a wash and go tomorrow, I would get single strand knots, and it has nothing to do with me needing a trim. It's just that wash and goes, are terrible for my hair they tangle my hair up so that's 
sometimes a sign but not necessarily um if you stretch your hair a lot or blow dry it and the ends look thinner that's a good sign so when you trim your hair get hair scissors y'all used to clown me so hard like the first year of me being on social media because i didn't use hair scissors i feel like they made a slight difference ever since i bought a pair but also y'all just so y'all know my hair scissors are hair scissors they look like play-doh kid scissors but they i promise y'all when i bought it it was in the pack i think they're from goody and it, and it says hair shears or whatever so they're hair scissors yeah make sure you use hair scissors because they are sharpened in a way to give you a clean cut sometimes when you use dull scissors or just scissors around the house when you cut your hair it might cause more split ends because it's not sharp enough or the angle isn't right so just keep that in mind how you trim is up to you like what state of your hair i personally prefer to trim my hair when it's stretched typically blow dry i can see better some people prefer to trim their hair curly some people prefer to trim their hair curly some people like i gotta get a silk press and then get my hair trimmed it's up to you some people want to go to professional. That's a great option too. I'm scared because because last time I went, she was scissor happy. She cut off like eight inches of my hair. But up to you. Okay, next type of method is styling. This really is just up to you, honestly. Like I feel like there's a scale of styling. If you wear your hair out less, you'll have to do your hair less. If you wear your hair out more, you'll have to do your hair more. When our hair is out, it is exposed to the air, the elements, it gets drier faster, you get, you have to trim a little bit more often. Fine, you can still grow your hair just like anybody else, it's just your preference. But knowing this helps you understand like what's gonna be like waiting for you, like the type of work ethic. I would personally consider myself more like, this is the middle, I'm like right, and actually like over here. Only because as a hair influencer, I wear my hair out a little bit more than I would prefer. <laughs> if I was a hair influencer, you'd never see my hair, honestly. So <laughs> I'll kind of consider myself over here just because of y'all. So thank y'all for that. So yeah, it's just up to you. Um, and with styling, that's also just going to be trial and error. Everybody's different. Um, everybody's twist out routine is going to be different. Everybody's braid out routine is going to be different. I would highly recommend watching people with similar hair as you. If you have similar hair to me, watch me and see how they do their methods. Even like with wash day routine and anything trims and anything watching people that have hair similar to you is very helpful and like kind of understanding what you should be doing for your hair care routine and also with products i get a lot of questions about that like how do i know like i'm telling y'all why that's what helped me watch people that have hair that's similar to yours and see what types of products they're using the thickness the brands the ingredients and kind of like help you narrow down what you need to be looking for so yeah, I have a hairstyles playlist on my um, YouTube if you want to check that out. I've done a bunch of different hairstyles over the years if you just kind of want to get an idea. But honestly, styling is kind of not a lot under here on the, um, what is this? The document because it's really just up to you. It's just your preference. There's no right or wrong way to wear your hair. I've had comments of people telling me, oh, you hate your hair or I'm not a good influencer because I never wear my hair out. But y'all get plenty of content with my natural hair and... This is the way that I prefer to grow my hair. It's just easier. Next, healthy scalp. This applies to you if you have super dry, itchy, flaky scalp. No matter what you do, you always get flakes. It always gets super dry. Now, at some point, you got to go to a dermatologist. If it's really bad, that might be like a medical thing. But for most people, the issue is just your scalp care. Number one, to get a healthier scalp, make sure that you are cleansing thoroughly. That's why I like to shampoo and twist so I can get better access to my scalp. Use a scalp brush. Make sure that you are really cleansing your scalp that's super important some people they don't cleanse correctly so they still have product on their hair and on their scalp after they wash their hair then you go to style your hair again and it's like oh it's flaky make sure you are thoroughly cleansing your scalp two exfoliation um on my line i used to have a brown sugar and coffee exfoliating scrub i actually will go ahead and link that video somewhere here um if you want the recipe to it because i don't make it anymore scalp exfoliation is really good i don't do it often honestly i haven't done it in like a couple months honestly i only recommend it if you really have bad scalp issues it's going to help to get up that dry skin and those like flakes off of your scalp same thing with your face so scalp exfoliation is something they also have scalp exfoliators on the market if you're interested like scalp scrubs so exfoliation um avoid putting products on your scalp this is a must like okay look do what you want but i personally find that oiling my scalp every single day causes buildup greasing my scalp causes buildup so i whenever i put products on my hair i go from roots to ends but i do not touch my scalp again the only time i oil my scalp is after like three weeks i've been wearing a protective style my scalp's a little itchy a little dry a little bit of flakes just because it's old and i'll put some oil on my scalp my soothing strength and oil blend but yeah that's really the only time i put anything on my scalp i personally would say avoid putting products on your scalp please okay 
don't do it. And also another tip for flakes, um, make sure that your products mix together well. Um, I actually did, I'm gonna show a clip. I actually did a video where I showed my hair butter and I showed how I mix it with like a bunch of different products and it did not give any like white cast. It didn't like crumble up or anything like that. So if you mix two products together and they blend seamlessly, it is like a smooth concoction. That's a good sign that the products are gonna mix well on your hair. So just make sure your products mix well together. Not all products can go together. Except for my hair butter. It can basically go with anything. <laughs> okay, next is edges. This is for my girls who are struggling with edge growth. So listen up, okay? The reasons that I see people be having no edges or struggling with their edges is, number one, it's over manipulation. You're constantly doing your edges. Same way with your hair. If you're constantly manipulating your hair, it's gonna lead to breakage. If you're constantly doing your edges every single day with the edge brush and the comb, it, it could lead to breakage. Number two, you're doing styles that, that put too much tension on your hair. Nothing wrong with a slick back bun, but if I can see your thoughts, okay, that's a problem. Braids, that's why I like doing my hair myself. Even though it's tedious, I can control how tight stuff is around my edges and everything like that. So you need to be telling the stylist, leave this out, this braid's too tight, redo it. Because really any style can break your edges off if it's done wrong. So I'm saying that to say don't be terrified of styles, just do them correctly. Okay, so ways to help with your edge growth is number one. So again, avoid over manipulation. Um, so a key to this is getting a good edge control that will actually hold your edges. I talked about my one of my favorite ones from uh, Twisted Up and Baskin Lather. Um, those keep my edges laid for like three days. So if you have an edge control that can keep your edges laid for a couple days, you're not going to have to do them all the time. That's number one. Number two, keep your edges hydrated. So. If you want to oil your edges, that's great, but just make sure you take a little bit of water on your fingers first, apply them to your edges, and then put the oil on your edges. I actually have a video on how to grow your edges, which, well, is also in my natural hair playlist. Everything's in my natural hair playlist. Just go watch it. Honestly, like, just leaving your edges alone is probably your best bet. Just don't overdo it, and you'll be fine, so. And last thing that you need to know regarding methods is heat. First of all, don't be scared of heat. I just straightened my hair on 14. It didn't even get straight. My hair is still reverting, okay? You need to understand how your hair reacts to heat to avoid heat damage. Again, with, with hair care, anything can literally ruin your hair. So the key to having a successful hair care routine is just knowing how to do stuff. That's really it. If you know how to use heat, it's fine. So for example, I know what heat protections work for my hair. So now I'm not scared about using the wrong heat. Most heat protections that you look up and be like, what's the best heat protecting? They're good. I've used the Chi Iron Guard, the Color Wow, uh, Bio Silk. All those are pretty um, decent heat protectants. I probably should have included that in the products, huh? But just make sure that you have a good heat protectant. Always use a heat protectant. Personally, when I blow dry my hair though, I just use my hair butter, but I don't get heat damage from blow drying. If you tend to get heat damage from blow drying, I would recommend an actual heat protectant, but my hair is not sensitive, which brings me to my next point. I know your hair sensitivity. Typically, I find that people with looser hair tend to be more sensitive to heat damage than someone like me with thicker, curlier, kinkier, coilier hair. Not always, but that tends to be the most. So, like, I can straighten my hair on a higher heat and not get damaged versus someone with looser hair might not be able to. So, you just want to make sure. So, like, for example, me and my um, little sister, my little sister has type 3 hair. Um, and so, growing up, she had heat damage and I never did. But we both got our hair straight in the same amount of time. But at the same time, I got a relaxer. She never had a relaxer. So my damage came from the relaxer. Her damage before she went natural came from heat damage. So you see what I'm saying? So you just need to understand how sensitive your hair is to heat. And then also know how often to use it. If you're straightening your hair every single day, don't cry to me about heat damage. Now, I personally blow dry my hair almost every single time I wash it, but I wash my hair like once a month, once every six weeks, so that's perfectly fine. I use a Dyson Supersonic. I never go in the highest heat setting. It's always the middle one because the highest one's too hot. But yeah, it's okay to blow dry your hair. It's even okay to straighten your hair and just make sure that you're not overdoing it. And most people, when they get heat damage, it's, they can, they're like, oh yeah. They know it makes sense. Like, it's honestly kind of rare for you to straighten your hair one time and then you get heat damage. It happens, but most people, they get heat damage because they've been straightening their hair constantly. Especially if they wear styles with leave out. You're frying your leave out every single day to make it match the hair and all that. So, as long as you're smart with heat, I'm telling you, you'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Okay, so moving on to the last section of this video, which is consistency. Okay, let's have a little talk, okay? This video is not intended to make you think you can grow your hair fast. This video is not intended to make you think you can grow your hair by simply doing one thing, because that is not possible. Hair growth takes time, and it takes consistency, just like with anything else, with weight loss, okay? Weight loss takes time. You're not gonna drop 20 pounds in a day. You're not gonna drop 50 pounds in two weeks, right? 
it's going to take a couple, for a lot of people, it takes, you know, two, three, four months, depending on how heavy you are. And you're not going to drop 50 pounds just by going on a walk once a week, right? You have to consistently work out, consistently be active, and consistently eat right, and consistently make healthy choices, and over time, you will start to notice weight loss. Same thing with hair. You have to consistently be doing the right things for your hair care routine, and over time, you will notice growth. Also, keep in mind that your growth is honestly dependent on your perspective in the sense that some people feel like their hair isn't growing because you can't tell. It's been two weeks. Calm down, sis. Especially if you have type 4 hair like me, you, your, your hair shrinks up like a fourth of its actual length. I'm not going to see a difference in my hair growth for about another four or six months because it just takes that long for me actually to see the growth. It's growing. It just takes that long. Same thing with weight loss. You're losing weight every single day. You're consistent, but you're not actually going to see the difference until a month, two months, three months. Like right now, I started losing weight in August. I'm just now, like in November, started seeing actual results. So I want y'all to understand, you in this for the long haul. If you go and look up all people's natural hair journeys, it's at least two years. Most of them are typically three, four, five years long. So if you want long hair, you can definitely do it. Like there's nothing genetically stopping you because... Black girls can't grow hair, that's just a stereotype. But it's gonna take time, it's gonna take consistency, and it's gonna take you finding what works for you. That's the biggest thing. So when it comes to being consistent, that could be different. Like if you wash your hair once a week because you wear it out all the time, your consistency could be, okay, every single week I gotta do this, this, and this. But if you're like me, your consistency is once a month. You're like, okay, I'm gonna schedule my wash day for this time in December, then I'm gonna schedule it for this time in January, and on this day I'm gonna do this, this, and this. And really, I do my hair maybe two, three days out of the month. So your consistency depends on the type of routine that you wanna have, how you wear your hair out. Again, this scale, the more you wear your hair out, the more you're gonna have to do it. The less you wear your hair out, the less you're going to have to do it. But also with that, the less you wear your hair out, the more like on game you have to be when it comes to your hair care routine because you're not going to be touching your hair for another couple of weeks. So you got to make sure that moisture is on point, that hair is trimmed, it is fully detangled. You got to make sure all that's straight. There's not as much pressure when you wear out your hair out more. So just keep that in mind. I just want to emphasize to y'all again that... You can grow your hair. Like I said in the last video, I have given you every single thing you need to grow your hair. So at this point, if you just don't do it, that's just on you. I'm giving you the whole PDF of everything you need. Like today, download this, copy and paste it onto a Word doc or whatever onto your phone. Take three months and really work through it, fill it out, get your routine, and then be consistent with it. And then be consistent with it, and then in the summer, you could easily grow like a good, you know, four to six inches. So that's just on you. <laughs> So yeah, the key to hair growth is a very good, healthy hair regimen. That's it. It's not hard to do. The only challenging part about growing your hair is just learning what works for you. And that's it, period. Once you know what works, it's just about doing it. It took me six months after I went natural to learn my hair care routine. And then I just kept doing it for the next, what, six years. And here we are now. Of course, little things changed here and there. But the basics, the outline is basically say the same. All right, guys, that is it for this video. That is everything you need to grow long, healthy hair. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them, especially on this video. I know that a lot of y'all might have some questions or concerns, so I'm gonna try to help. Also, if you see anybody comment something and you know the answer, help them out. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button, put your notifications on so you don't miss the rest of Vlogmas or any other uploads. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram for daily content. And check out my hair care line, y'all. Seriously, it's going to make your hair growth journey a lot easier. I spent months formulating these products specifically for y'all. I don't, you know, try to gash y'all up about hair growth saying, oh, it's going to work in a week and, oh, you ain't got to do Nah, there's some legit, serious, good products. And if you use them in your routine consistently, you will definitely notice a difference. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Beautiful painter.